Well, earlier this week, it was reported that hoodlums broke into the government warehouses in Okure, the Ondo state capital, and looted COVID-19 palliatives stored there after the handing over ceremony of the palliatives by Kakovit to Governor Rotimea Kerdolu on August the 10th. Well, joining us now to speak on this is Aki Olotu, the chairman of Ondo state palliative distribution uh, committee. Uh, glad to have you join us, sir uh, Aki. Good afternoon. I'm glad to be here. Good. Uh, bring us up to speed with the latest on this palliative distribution and, of course, uh, how uh, hoodlums, as it were, managed to break in and loot those palliatives. Well, the, the bottom line is this. I mean, the truth is this. As at the time uh, NSAS uh, protest started nationwide, we have succeeded in distributing 98% of what COVID gave to us in the state. What was left in that warehouse was mere a sugar because we were given, the, the consignment we were given was so much, so large in terms of sugar. And that was, uh, we've, we've given out sugars as well, but that, that was likely what was left behind. Others are just relics of uh, leftovers uh, uh, that we had in the store. This is what we did. Uh, before then, before August 10, I have this document with me here. It's an open document. I wrote to Kakovid and I told them after briefing the governor that, look, we cannot afford to keep these items in store. I gave three reasons to them that one, Gary that we have there, that there will be moisture drift, that the Gary will lose both taste and color. Number two, I said, on those days, it's an election year, that it is not good for us to be distributing palliative items during electioneering campaign, that people will read meaning into it. And I said, thirdly, that the uh, COVID-19 outbreak then was becoming a community, a community something that the level of infestation was becoming higher and that I anticipated a second lockdown. Thank God that did not uh, happen. I wrote to COVID to let them know that we just have to be commence distribution. And like I said, I did advance three reasons. Number one, that the possibility of having a second lockdown because of the increase in the number of uh, people getting infected by, by COVID-19 then. Then number two, I made it clear that Gary was not uniformly dried and there will be moisture drift, which will lead to change in color and taste. And number three was that we Undo said this is an election year and the election was becoming very close and that it will not be good for us to be distributing the uh, palliative items during electioneering campaign that people will remain into it. Eventually, they agreed that we should commence distribution. They had the flag off on August 10, which we did. The flag off was carried out by the governor, and we started distributing these items. So let me make this very clear. What we had in Ondose was a case of asking, not a, not a matter of looting, because there was virtually nothing there to be looted. So let this be clearly stated. Like I said, what was in the store warehouse was sugar. Sugar we have given out more than enough to people. And you know, people are conscious of, of the effect of taking excess of uh, sugar because of uh, diabetes and this and that. So we were left with sugar there largely. And when they broke in, they were disappointed. That was why they said the warehouse are blessed. They were disappointed because there was no single bag of rice there, no liter of vegetable oil there, no bag of gari was found there. It, it, the place was virtually empty. So because of that disappointment, they said the place had blazed. And the nearby store, which was our fertilizer store, they went there. They thought when they saw bags inside, they thought it was rice. It was, it was when they broke into the place that not quite it was fertilizer. So in on those state. I'm saying it emphatically that there was nothing in the storehouse to be looted apart from sugar. And the sugar was all the relics of what uh, was left behind. That is number one. Number two, we have succeeded in distributing to the 18 local governments in the state. We have 18 local governments and the entire 18 local governments have gotten their allocation because 
we are not to distribute at the state level according to COVID uh, uh, distribution uh, protocol. Now, after that, what we had left, we were now looking at special interest groups. And if you look at the directives given by uh, COVID, they said we should look at the less privileged. So at the state level now, we now look at widows, 17,000 widows that are verifiable were given a palliative items. And let me say this again, people must have this at the back of their mind. COVID in the state, they have a targeted number of about 45,000 beneficiaries. 45,000 in a state where we, we, of over 3 million people. It's like just a drop of water in the ocean. Before COVID brought their items, we had succeeded in having the first phase of our palliative distribution, the second phase of our palliative dis dis uh, distribution. And I'm saying this with all authority at my disposal. These are verifiable facts. You can reach out to the artisan groups in the state, were they given palliatives or not? I think we should be one of the few states, if there is any other state, that took palliative items to hospitals. We, we targeted the pregnant women, we targeted the old, pe old people, Let very me old. Let me, let me come in here to um, ask you about what you've said so far. Let's really have a conversation about this because what we're looking at is quite worrying. Um, COVID, yes, the private sector coalition have come out to say that the reason why there were so many or so there were a lot of palliatives found in different warehouses across the country was because they didn't they didn't have the right distribution network to really get these palliatives across to the people. Now, whether it's just sugar or whether it's a load of bags of rice, those were palliatives meant for the people that were still kept inside a warehouse. Now, you're the chairman of the Ondo State Palliative Distribution Committee. Knowing that there is still an excess of sugar left in the warehouse, even if you personally, even if you personally felt that, okay, all the palliatives that we have have been distributed, why was this not followed up with, with anyone? I mean, this is sugar that could have maybe gone to another state if you believe that nobody needed it. Our plan was to give the sugar to the bakers in the state and negotiate a reduction in the price of uh, their bread that they will push into circulation. That was what we had in mind. And the plan was to get across to COVID to seek their permission to do that. We, we gave out sugar massively to people. I wrote to complain that the volume of sugar that was being sent to the state was too much. And after the distribution, we gave out sugars. And what we were left behind was, what was left behind was just about 1,000 plus bags. It is not that uh, it was uh, very much. It was not that the quantity was huge. So we now thought, okay, whom do we give the, we gave palliative to prostitutes in the state, I mean social workers. We gave to widows, we gave to the old people. We were taking it to different houses across the state. We have audiovisual documents showing us taking palliatives to, to people in their, in their respective homes. And so the sugar that was left behind, we thought maybe, okay, we can as well negotiate with, we can talk to the bakers. If you have this, will you reduce the price of bread in circulation? If they agree to that arrangement, we, we, our plan was that, okay, we will write to COVID that we are still having about 1,000 uh, bags of uh, uh, sugar left behind that this is what we want to do. At least if it, bread that is being sold for 250 naira, if it now goes for about 230 or 220, that is a relief to the people in the state. It was not that anybody kept anything. Nobody they are saying that was in the plans before all of this happened. But let me ask you what eventually played out in Ondo State. A 24-hour coffee was imposed by the governor on the 18 local government areas to forestall breakdown of law and order. However, what we saw in the state was the exact opposite because the NSAS protests monitored in Ondo State were peaceful. One of the few peaceful protests we saw across the country. Then came the curfew and then the arson you talked about. So have you as a government been able to evaluate why this happened? Because the curfew was to forestall the breakdown of law and order. What happened? I'm telling you now, you are getting it very, very wrong. What happened in the state was that as at the time the NSAS protest was on, it was peaceful. Yeah. People, there was cooperation. There, was, there wasn't any problem. But at a point in time, as in it took over, people were some hoodlums took over. And bearing in mind, I will say this without any uh, fear of anything. You know, 
the, 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 an election was held in the state. And you know, the governor won in 15 local governments out of 18. If, if the governor did not win in Akure South, and you know the leading uh, opposition candidate was from Akure, if you look at the three local governments where the governor did not win, they were largely Akure local governments. And it was political. I am saying this 100%. The attack, the hulum that came out to wreck havoc in the state were politically motivated. And this is this we all know in the state. And that was precisely what happened. It is not because it was planned. It was an orchestrated arrangement. And when that all was going on, all the, the duty of the governor is the first duty of any responsible governor is security of life and property. So you were just looking at people at, 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 uh, at the NSAS demos, uh, uh, people that were uh, uh, demonstrating. But you, we were not looking at the other side, looking at people taking laws into their hand, breaking already. We, we, we were monitoring trend in other places. So there is no way a, a responsible governor will not shut down, will not impose coffee. So that way, it will have been more, it will have been disastrous. It, this, 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 this situation will have been uh, more terrible. I so ask if the coffee was effective or not, because we still saw break law, break, breakdown of law and order, despite that coffee. But thank you so much, Mr. Akin Olotu, there uh, from Ondo State, Southwest Nigeria.